nation. Hebrew Kingdom Building. So now, homie, can a rock take your place and they can be a witness against you? Do you not know that? All of nature is a witness against you. Because you was there when it was spoken to existence. <laughs> Presenting yourselves before Yah. Deuteronomy chapter 16, 16 through 7, three times a year. All of your males shall appear before you, your Elohim. They shall not appear before you, empty handed. Every man shall give as he is able, according to the blessing of you, or your Elohim, that he has given you. As we stand in this new year, waiting for our Pesach, the question we all must ask is how? Say how. How, how will I present myself before you? How? Say how. how. What will be the intentions of my heart? Give you all this for a reason. Consider your ways. Will I be counted as a good steward of what Yah has given me? Will I even be able to stand in his presence? Better write these questions down. Will I offer my best and give my all? Before you go to pace, I ask yourself all these questions. You know, we're doing all this, doing all these teachings, all the more ways doing these teachings. You know, some folks still won't go to pace out with this stuff. But they think they're getting by. They don't even know. they just been sealed. That they are the vessels of destruction. They are the vessels of destruction. And they think they don't still keep hiding their stuff and come to fellowship with us. Yahuwah knows who you are. It's not that you don't want to repent. You're part of your heart. Y'all got that? No. Okay. No, I, I told him to take a picture of it and put it in the Shabbat. It's, right. it's in the Shabbat. Take the toe down. There you go. Okay. Go ahead. Um, okay. That's not I was going to say, also, like you said, they were going to go to Pesach with still things on their heart. That, that's that's a selfish person. Oh, we're gonna talk about that. It's selfish and you 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 putting a stumbling block for someone else. The whole tribe. The whole exactly the whole tribe. You're hindering blessings for other people and you you, you are, like Nasi I said um uh, months ago, he's not gonna let nobody get in his way. You know, you're in the way of somebody receiving from the most high. If you don't go there with that on your get out the way. Get out the way. I had my issue. I went to the most hard. I, 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 prayed. I, was, I was a stumbling block for somebody else. I had to clear myself up before I move on. Hallelujah. But if you're a stumbling block, get out the way. Come. Come. Go to prayer. Right here. Right here. I was just going to say, when going to pay off, your mindset should be that you're presenting yourself before Yahuwah, but also you're responsible for your tribe as well. God. It's not a self thing. It's the fact that whatever you bring to Pesach, you are bringing that for the entire tribe. Yes. You can't do that. You have to literally release everything from yourself before you get there, because that can be not only a hindering to somebody in your tribe, but that can make us all fall. God, naked. And wives, if your husband is aching, don't you go along with it. Let it expose him. So whatever judgment fall on him, got to fall on you too. 
Hallelujah. Are we about to get into it? Y'all ready? Yes. See, because there's different ways you can present yourself before your own. This is what we're going to talk about. Because I guarantee you, some, when we go over this, some of you are going to present yourself before your own in this manner. That after hearing this, you're going to have to correct yourself. We have many different incidents in the scripts where we had men and women coming before Yah and present themselves. Some came with wrong intentions and they were selfish. They could call to say or help to say somebody said. Selfish, they selfish. Some held back and did not present all to him and lied. Say they lied. Some people ran from his presence because of shame and they ran. Say ran. ran. Oh, they run at the wrong time. They don't run when a woman come in their face. They don't run when another man come in their face. But they run from your war. Then there were some that came the correct way and they were accepted by him. Which one will you be counting at? How will God see you in his presence? And we're going to talk about all of these selfish liars, the runners, and the ones that were accepted. Get ready? The runner, say the runner. The runner. Genesis chapter 3, verse 8 through 10. And they heard the sound of you walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of Yahuwah among the trees of the garden. But, say but. But, but Yahuwah called to the woman. Amen. Called to the woman. Amen. He called to the man and said to him, where are you? Not where y'all at. Where you at? And he said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. I ran. There ought to be some individuals like that. Let's keep going. Adam had a point in time where he would meet with y'all. When it was time to present himself, he failed to show up and present himself to y'all on the on the on time with the wrong thing on. Oh, so when he just come before y'all on time, you got to make sure you got the right stuff on. Yeah. Chief Mo, Chief Yahushua just came out with a lesson. What are you wearing to pay side? <laughs> what will you have on? Will you have on your only garment or will you have on the fig leaves? Would you still be covering your sin instead of exposing it and saying, yeah, this is me, this is who I am. Instead of exposing himself and presenting himself, he covered himself and ran it in from Yah. Will you run from Yah or will you be able to stand in his presence? Shame will cause you to run, but repentance will cause you to stand. So he has someone that had a mindset. Who not sitting. They ain't doing nothing wrong. They coming to Shabbat. They, they love the most high. They ain't rebels or nothing. But they haven't fully exposed themselves. They still wearing fig leaves. They still got the mask on. You are a runner. Say so you're a runner. And if you go present yourself at Pesach before Yah, he's not going to recognize you. Why will he recognize you? Because of the fig leaves. How many people heard our message? Covering what is the what is the time? Wearing fig leaves? Hot mask. 
Hey, how many heard that message? Okay, I already told y'all. If you bought HRT, you should have heard every message HRT put out. That's why y'all don't be getting some more stuff. They ain't gonna listen to y'all. Yes. Even though Adam ran, God still gave him authority. Even though it's good. Give it a minute. Even though Adam ran and he hid, y'all still came and found him and judged him anyway. So running is running's not gonna get you away. It's not gonna get you, it may get you by, but it, it won't get you. He's still gonna come find you. Well, I got a message. If you allow me to bring it out, it's called you can run, but you can't hide. That's right. You can run, but you cannot hide. Young King got a question or a response. Oh, Coach, go ahead. I just want to give all praise to side for delivering me from being a runner. Hallelujah. Because it's like, man, it's something about that being exposed. It's something about being vulnerable and ashamed. Mm. You know what I mean? He was naked and ashamed. And it's something about when the Most High reveals everything in front of the the Mishpaka because you're in a room of light, <laughs> you're going to be exposed. God. That can lead to that shame and that you know that tendency to to run. You know what I mean? And so, um, I just want to say this: you know, don't allow, don't be, don't run from Pesach. You know what I mean? Don't allow what the Most High has exposed in recent weeks, recent months, to cause you to be shamed and run. But if anything, run to Him. Uh, God, no one from him, one to him. Young King. I just want to say, how did Adam present himself to y'all? And we should think about that and say, how should we present ourselves to y'all? That's right, Young King. How did Adam present himself to y'all? He presented himself still covered, still covering his stuff. Thinking y'all can't see. God. It ain't that y'all can't see, he just don't recognize you. The selfish one, say the selfish one. Get out of here. We're going to be birthing um, 
Where's the coat to be on? Oh, she just talked about it earlier about a birthday. We've been talking about birthday lately. A lot of people talk about birthday, some coming forward. We can tell who you married to by what you can see. We can tell if you've really been truly knowing God, being intimate with him, or you've just been laying around. Based off what you can see. See, mom, Isha cannot conceive of children of mine if I never laid with them. If I was never intimate with them. But if someone else is intimate with her, I can tell that child not mine by what she can see. See, the things you're conceiving, hallelujah, Torah, yeah. The things you're conceiving, they are not of Yah. That's why Yah say you are not mine. Your father is of Hasatan. Hallelujah. What was I saying? Oh, Hallelujah. Go ahead. So Yahuwah asked the question um, in that last slide. He asked, where are you? Now, we know Yahuwah is the author of life, so we know that he knew where Adam was, right? But he didn't recognize him on his function because Adam was out of function. He wasn't walking and being what he was created to be. Man was created to be obedient to Yahuwah, and when he became disobedient, Yahuwah couldn't even recognize him. So that's the thing about coming to Pesach. You know, when we're out of function and when we're not walking in function, does you will recognize us? And that's why our offering is not accepted because we're not walking in what we were called to be. Come on. Come on. Come on. And he don't recognize you because he don't know you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He must so what's that in him? Elder. Oh, it's okay. That's like the script that uh uh, I came across today, uh, and it's, it's, it's been with me because I ended up doing a little t-shirt design called Yahuwah's Planting because he said our final end would be to be trees of righteousness. So he's planting us and not going to pluck us up. So when he talked about the seed, that, he, that he was, but we're springing forth, we're bringing forth that, that tree of righteousness. So that's all. God, hallelujah, hallelujah. Torah, and the What we're just saying is that Yahuwah can always see us when we need you. Ask, where are you? Adam did not acknowledge what he did. He really cast a blame on his Isha. The most I want us to recognize us. If we don't confess where we are, then there is no deliverance from us. Adam got kicked out of the garden. He did not admit his wrong. Mm. The woman you gave me. Mm -hmm. and when the, what the Most High wants to show us today is that we need to see ourselves. We need to acknowledge where we are. Lest this Pesach consume us. Mm. God, hallelujah, hallelujah. So, we're going to go on. The selfish one. We just talked about the runner, right? Now we got to deal with the ones that selfish come to Pesach. Genesis chapter 4, 4 through 7. And you have regard for Abel and his offering. Say Abel and his offering. But for Cain and his offering, he had no regard. So Cain was very angry. His face fell. You were said to Cain, why are you angry, bro? And why is your face for? If, say if, yeah. if you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin is crouching at the door. Its desire is contrary to you, but you must rule over it. Say rule over it. Cain and Abel both had the right Offering, say the right offering. Right offering. Oh, I know we was taught Cain had the wrong offering. Cain brought some fruit, and you would want it alive up. No, Cain brought the right offering. What nothing wrong with Cain offering? If we reread, it said Yahuwah had regard for who? Abel and his offering, but for Cain. And his offering, he had no regard. 
Then what do you would say to him? If you do well, he say if you bring the right sacrifice. He said, if you do well, won't you be accepted? So with something in his arm. Something wrong with him. It wasn't about his offering. I would have accepted your offering if you ain't had no attitude, okay? Hallelujah. Cain wanted his offering to be accepted his way. Say his way. His way, without fixing himself, he had selfish motives and he wanted it done his own way. But you can't do it your way. Because if it ain't y'all's way, it ain't the right way. All right, three hallelujahs. Hallelujah. Before he presented his offering to Yah, he should have dealt with his heart and his countenance. Instead, he came in with selfish pride. He came in like, I don't care what my heart is. Y'all better accept this. I don't care if I don't forgive my brother or sister. Y'all better take this. Shoot, I was in the, I was just doing worship. I'm, I'm all sweaty and all that. Yeah, why you won't accept this? If you do well, won't that accept it? Man, I was just, I went to Shabbat every day. Man, I was just fellowshipping with the Hopkins, landing. What you talking about? Why you won't accept it? If you do well, won't I accept it? Go fix that with your brother and sister first. Before you offer an offering up to you. There will be some that will present themselves to Yah with the same selfish attitude. And because of this, they will not be accepted by Yah. So there's going to be some folks that go to Pesach. Well, I'm for, yeah, I pray they don't. I, I pray I don't. I, I hope you don't. I hope you ain't talking about this. I hope you ain't talking about nobody rebirth. But there's going to be some, he said, there's going to be some that go to Pesach with still unforgiveness in their heart. And they still won't offer the offering. They're going to still present it before you will because they're going to feel nobody sees it. Nobody understands me. Nobody knows me. Nobody knows how I was serving. Go to Give it a mic. Just to lay back on what you were saying, um, I was dealing with something, um, some condemnation, and um, I went in a prayer closet, and I began to cry to Yah. At first, he was silent, and so um, after a little while, um, he said to me. How Satan is trying to put you in a place of condemnation so when you go to Pesach, you go with that. He said, you need to get rid of that because if you come before me with condemnation, you're going to be unclean. Mm -hmm. So it, it, even with condemnation, even with us saying, okay, well, I'm being something that, you know, I, you know, feel bad for something that I did, you know what I'm saying, that's still coming before him in an unclean place. And then he sent Ema to come and say the same exact words to me that he gave me. So even something simple as we may think, oh, I'm un in condemnation and there's nothing wrong with coming before him like that, but we would still be coming before him unclean. Uh -huh. I, and I think it's because it's, condemnation is not believing the report. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Like your son. Um, also, uh, I want to say too about Cain. I think one of the reasons why you rejected his sacrifice too is because he didn't have regard for Yahuwah. Because when Yahuwah came to him after he killed his brother, um, he basically told when Yahuwah asked him, Where's your brother? He was like, Am I my brother's keeper? Yes, basically, he started small mouthing Yahuwah. So, being sarcastic. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's a little insight. <laughs> Just real quick, but um, I was watching Chief Moray's Yahusha lesson on where, what are you wearing to Pesach? And he brought up birthday.
so we're all going to come with we're all going to come birthing something we're either going to birth a righteous birth or we're going to birth um a miscarriage mm -hmm. come on and what you conceive by what you conceive i can tell who you've been with Go ahead, Koti. I was watching Chief uh, Maria Yahusha's. Well, I was listening. At Midrash, I'm so glad that Maury Kowal explained it this way because uh, last year when I went to Pesach, I, I guess I didn't quite understand it properly, and he spared my life because I could have been killed. I had so much unforgiveness in my heart that I just thought about it recently, and I'm like, he spared my life. He may have dimmed my vision, but he spared my life, and I, I see it so much differently. So, I thought I knew about forgiveness, but it wasn't until the third day of Pesach, I want to say the second or third day during, um, that he spoke a word to me, and he told me that my vision, if I, I think it was like if I did it, ask to seek forgiveness and truly forgive, that I was going to lose my sight. And so I had, you know, Maury and the Emas pray over me, but... Then, of course, like a week later, it happened. And then, but this week, when I heard the lesson, you said, Maury Kowal, you said, um, specifically when you were explaining, like, us presenting ourselves and so forth, that we could drop dead, basically be killed. And I didn't understand the significance of it last year. But this year, I actually sat back and I reflected on how how I've tried to change and have been awakened and enlightened and studied more and praying more and yeah. kept sending yeah. a word and, and, and even though I can't physically see the words just he's talking to me he's speaking to me he's telling me he's, he's showing me how to get right so that you know I can be a witness and and I'm not ashamed about, you know, or afraid that he did my sight because he spared my life. I can't do it. Oh, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. So I want to, I hope y'all heard of Cody's testimony. Mm -hmm. Hope y'all heard it. And you he spoke to her, but she didn't understand forgiveness, but he spared her life. But he said, I'm going to do this to you, I'm going to spare your life. But don't think you're going to get by because you have witnesses that stand against you this day. What's the witnesses? It's not just us, but it's the very rocks outside. Go ahead, honey. It's kind of uh, to land back on everything, but uh, this specific passage, I know we're talking about Hesop, but this process should be uh, in our heart on a weekly basis when it comes to Shabbat. Uh, that, um, that our, we have to have that preparation that we're going to give a righteous sacrifice to the Lord, even on our social uh, media, uh, not even uh, expect, uh, inspection uh, every single week. Uh, not just leading up to the, uh, the main uh, avoid. God, God. And you should, before you walk into that rock. You should have an inspection now. Now, the three times the men got to come present themselves, that's another level of inspection. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, you're supposed to have it right, but now you got to present. You ain't just repent. Now you got your, you gave me this. Okay, you all, I gave you your family. Why your household out of order? You got to explain that. It's quiet, boy. Y'all heard that? That was a pin drop. Yeah, that was a remote. <laughs> Go ahead, Elder. Also, um, I realized too coming to um, Shabbat, which I first pitched out also, when you said those who think they're getting away, before we go to the most, before we go to Yahuwah, the most high, people think they're getting away physically, they're going to die. But when you look at it also, it's spiritual too. You know, they're not looking at the spiritual man going to die. You know, I'm getting away. They're going to, they're going to Shabbat. 
well, I'm good. I, I made it. I did. But spiritually, you're going spiritually. Yeah. And that means when you're going spiritually, you can seal yourself. You see? Yeah. So, so let me let me land back on that for individuals that may think that. I mean, I've been coming about this long. I, I mean, I don't got away. You got to understand, it's not that you're getting away. You would seal you. He's not giving you a heart to repent. That's why you're comfortable. And that's the most dangerous place. That's why we brought up the lesson. Why stay ye here and die? Why stand ye here in the presence of Yah and die? Just go out there and die. Go, go play in traffic and die that way. Why stand where there's life and die? Why lock yourself in a grocery store and starve to death? Why? Why stand ye here and perish or die? Hallelujah. Elder. First, I just want to say, uh, oh, praise to the most high. Um, if you bring this understanding with Cain and Abel, because I've heard different lessons, and um, it was always seeming as Cain's flaw was that he didn't bring forth an animal. Mm, and I was, I was talking to Maisha about, I think, last night or this morning. I was just battling with how that makes sense because. In Genesis 4 and 2, you know, it, it tells us that Abel was the keeper of the sheep and Cain was a worker of the ground. Right. So they were supposed to bring forth the offering of what they were over. Right. And then when you brought out about something being in Cain's heart that caused him not to be accepted, you know, it made me go back to um, Genesis 3, where he, uh, he told Adam that the curse was the ground. So Cain received the curse of the ground wow. and he wasn't happy about that. Mm -hmm. wow. mm -hmm. And therefore what he brought forth, because he said he, he said you're gonna, you know, you're gonna suffer by the sweat of your brother. Mm -hmm. So Cain being the firstborn, hmm. he had to take on the responsibility of that curse of the ground. Mm -hmm. And he wasn't happy about Very that. Mm -hmm. So I now I have, now I have a complete understanding. I just want to say totally. Yeah. Hallelujah. Oh, most I gave him one talent that was in his capability of handling, but he did it grudgingly. He complained the whole time. So now when it was time to offer before you, this is what helped us say, he did it grudgingly. He had that bitterness. He had that bitterness in his heart. It wasn't his offering. Nothing was wrong with Cain's offering. You know, in church they say he probably had some rotten apples in there. Our preacher say he took the you know, <laughs> preacher say he took the tree of uh, fruit from a, from a tree of life. I said, "Guys, whoever did eat that don't need to make it in the kingdom." He was trying to tie it to the tree of life. I came, man, shut up. No, it had nothing to do with his offering. It was all in regards of his heart. Hallelujah. She went with her father. Who's that? Okay, all right. I see the little baby right now. So, go ahead. Okay. Then, so, the selfish ones and the selfish ones. So, we got the runner. Now, we got the selfish one. Don't present your Selves before Yahuwah as Cain did. Don't present yourselves before Yahuwah as who we talked about before. Adam. Adam, say Adam. Adam. As Adam did. As Adam ran. I told you, some folks ain't, some folks don't make excuses not to come to play soccer. All right, fat tire, ain't even come. They run in because they got fig leaves on them. Then there's going to be some with pride and selfish. Say, I don't care. I've been good this long. Here I am, y'all. Man, this ain't nothing but a feast day. They just be doing too much. Here I am, y'all. 
Oh, they just get way back to the ancient ways. We just need to just keep the pace on and go on. Here I am, y'all. Okay, King. Go ahead and say that to y'all. See, there's two things. No one should be afraid to go to Pesach after hearing this. Because if you're righteous, you should be looking forward to what you have to present before you hold. Now guess what? When you present before you hold, there's going to be something you're going to tell you you need to fix. Because you don't got it all together. I don't got it all together. So prepare that. Don't don't you ever come. Don't you dare have pride that then you come in your Lord's presence and you say, man, man, you told. I ain't never seen nobody like you. Boy, boy what? No. He'll tell you he's doing good, son, proud of you. But fix this. You doing that some time, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love you. See how you grow. But also fix this. It's always going to, because you're standing before a holy, holy Elohim. Something is going to be off. So be prepared to present with joy, but also be able to receive accountability. Hallelujah. So don't be like Cain. The liar. Say the liar. Oh. Oh, you know this one. Y'all know what this is about, right? And if you don't know, we're about to read it. Acts chapter 5. Verses 1 through 5. We're going to skip down to 9 and 10. But a man, a man named Ananias and his wife, Sapphira. Now it is said that these two didn't die. They changed their name. Because they still dwell amongst us. Sold a piece of property. And with his wife knowledge, he kept back for himself some of the proceeds and brought only part of it and laid it at the apostles' feet. But it's his. It's his land. Why he can't? He can do whatever he wants with his land. That's my 1400, my 1200. I can't believe it. I want that back. Oh, we have folks ask us. They probably listen. And they ain't getting it back. Hallelujah. I know. I just rubble fat. I know. Y'all yeah, say you just rubble fat. I know. Folks gave to the kingdom and wanted back. But they asked the church for a dime back. And then you got the nerve to ask for money back. But well, we don't gave more than what you put in. We gave to you more. I was vain. I was vain. So, and with his wife knowledge, he kept back for himself some of the proceeds and brought only part of it and laid it at the apostles' feet. But keep for saying, and not is. Why has Hasatan filled your heart to lie? To Ruach HaKodesh and to keep back for yourself part of the proceeds of the land. While it remained unsold, listen to what he's saying. While it remained unsold, did it not remain your own? While you had the 1200 in your pocket, did it not remain your own? Did anybody force you to give it up? Yes. Lied to the Wuak Hakodesh. That means the Wuak told him, bro, get the money get up. Money. Man. He was like, uh -uh. Come on, man. Did it not remain your own? And after it was sold, was it not at your disposal? Why is it that you have contrived this deed in your heart? You have not lied to man, but to Yahuwah. When I heard these words, he fell down and breathed his last. 
So yeah, yeah. that means he died. Yeah. Right away. Let me show you why. And I know you see other instances throughout the Barrett Hot Shah where it's like, man, why the most I ain't give them like in and out of I'm about to put you on or something. This is when Yahusha came and order was being established. All right. Come on. Yeah. So with order being established, Yahuwah had to kill some folk. folks. Folks because he had to set the tone. Yeah. And let people know, listen, man, don't come here playing. Because see, back then, you couldn't just come in and say, I follow you, because you could have died for that. They killed all the apostles. So you had to come in with a serious mind. And Yahuwah, when I had nines about, trust me, this is word around the street. Yo, whatever we present to you, we got to make sure we give it to him because you see what happened in Azibar. So because it was first being established, you had to set an order. It didn't end up happening. The church came, everything got corrupted. Now you was establishing his order again. Guess what's about to happen? Guess what's about to happen? Now that order is being established within the culture and the kingdom, some folks got to die. But Peter, verse 9, said to her, this is his wife coming in now. He came and asked his wife. And, and they know that's how I am. I'm kind of like Peter in this. Before you do something, what I would do is I'll ask you. I say, hey, you know about so and so? Not all the time. Not most of the time, but sometimes we all we get a lie. Nah, I don't, I don't know nothing about that. Oh. They don't even understand. I got them on video, right? Mm. Oh, I suppose I'm starting to tell me the truth now. I'm told what I do. <laughs> Cause I always call, you know. I don't try to say, "Hey, you know anything about this? Have you heard about?" No, well, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't know that. Wow. But they, they got it's you, right? Yeah. Mm. Oh, mm. it wasn't me. <laughs> Still wasn't. <wow. laughs> but Peter said to her, "How is it that you have agreed together to test the ruach of your?" Behold, the feet of those who have buried your husband are at the door, and they will carry you out. Immediately, she fell down at his feet and breathed her last breath. These two, husband and wife, came before Yahuwah and lied to you. That's why, husband, wives, you don't go along with what your ish or isha or husband and wife is doing. You make sure you follow your your God. 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 Husbands, don't you let your wives get you in trouble. Don't you act like Adam and become weak. Adam was sitting, whether Adam was sitting there or not, he knew where that food was from. He knew where, he knew where that food was from. He knew, because I don't know, that. I think that food was glowing. He just knew that's from the tree of life. Oh, uh, I mean, that's what the tree is going to be. Why did she pick this fruit? He was the one but he said, he, he gave it to him. And he ate it. I don't know. He probably had the mindset, I don't want my baby to go down by herself. Oops. His mother would have been going down. Like Mary J. She'd been going down. I don't know. Like, yeah, somebody's got the best one. Boy, she's been going down. I'm not agreeing with you with this. What have you done? Some people say, well, it was already done. So Adam should have just, hey, no. The Bible said, when Adam ate, then their eyes were open. When the one I gave the command to, man. We got too many masculine women and any feminine men. I'm going to say it one more time. <laughs> we got too many masculine women and effeminate men. That's transgender. Women, that's transgender. That's, that's, that's perversion. 
Come on, teach it, don't you? I'm going to see you. I'm going to see you. That's perversion. Oh, I got to talk on this, y'all. You're pushing me out. I feel your hand in my back. I'm going to move. I'm going to go forward. To our single men, if you want to be married, you got to make sure you know what fitness is in you. And when you see even no gay junk, it ain't like you gay or something. Mm -hmm. You got to handle stuff like a man. That's right. yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah, you can't be in your feelings. When, you, when it comes to a decision, you got to be able to make it a stand on. Yeah. Yeah. Whether it's the wrong yeah. one, if your heart, if you oh. know your heart intention was to do the right, he'll protect your character. Right. Right. You can't be wavering. Be huh? Single women. Oh. Break my voice back, y'all. They need it. <laughs> Single women. If you desire to be married, you got to know how to be submissive. Oh, he didn't say the next one. Oh, this is all right. This is this go ahead. This is all right. I'm gonna talk about teach. I'm gonna teach you the book. So listen, you got to know how to be submissive. I'm up in my house. You got to know. You got to kill the masculine ways. I can do it by I can do it bad all by myself. I don't need no man. Uh, don't worry, you ain't gonna get one. Poor ass ain't coming to Bozo. It's so much simpler. It's easy to get a strong man. You ain't got to run every day. See, if women will understand the power. I'm talking about this all the time. Women have a power. They got the That's why Jezebel was able to manipulate AI. <laughs> That's the perfect example of a masculine woman and a feminine man. When it came to Ahab handling business, he cried like a little girl. He went and asked the man, hey, give me your property. Man was like, man, get out of my face. <laughs> and this is how Jezebel was. Read the story. What's up? What you, what you crying for? Man? I want to live, but he said no. Okay, I'll get the name. I'll get the name. Just stop crying. You little punk, stop crying. Yeah, right. <laughs> and then she went and got it. When she went and got it, guess what? She thought to herself, I'm raising another son. Right, right. Here we go. Husband, don't you become no son to your wife. Come on. Hallelujah. Oh, boy. Come on. Don't you become no son to your wife, and then your son become the husband. Now, oh boy. Respect your husband. Yes, hallelujah. You always, see, we talk about me and I don't know why we know it's that. It's a little small whoa that goes on in the evil community where women, you know, women, they, they don't respect their husband, their ish. Maybe the most I'm trying to get that out of you, single women. Before you come and offer yourself before your husband, because your husband is praying, most I give me a submissive woman. And, and the most I ask you for, but he, most I like, nah, she ain't ready. Oh, yeah, I said her, no, no, man, trust me, she ain't ready. She watched too much Tyler Perry. Oh, she got the Tyler Perry Ruach. Think like a man, act like a woman. Don't you think like no man? I want a woman that think like a woman. Hallelujah. Walk like a woman. Talk Hallelujah. like a woman. Dress like a woman. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, yeah. Okay. Come on. Come on. Okay. Come on. Come on. Okay. Don't you, don't you, don't you do that. Throw the Tyler Perry movies out. Throw Color Purple out, some of y'all's favorite movie. Stop, silly.
Stop! 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 Because you're always not going to send your ish or your isha until you get yourself right. Hallelujah. So be mindful. Oh, I'm going to get you, King. Be mindful. Ananias. That you don't let survive cause you to do something you ain't tell you to do. There's many times I had to tell my Isha. My Isha, she didn't tell you. I love her. And when she wasn't right, I don't just go along with my Isha because she's my Isha. If she right. wrong, she wrong. That's right. That's right. And I don't walk on the eggshells. If you wrong, I'm not about to walk on the eggshells of my house because I told you you wrong. I'm walk 10 toes down. And if I'm wrong, guess what? She don't walk on the eggshells either. Because if I'm wrong, she, now she ain't rubbing in my face a little bit. You know? And she don't say it, but she like, hmm. You know, what women say, you know something. Well, yeah, you know, I was wrong. Hmm. <laughs> but what you doing then? I ain't say you know, I ain't say nothing. <laughs> man, then you know something will come up, you like, man, I shouldn't even did that last week. Mm. <laughs> well that hurts me really. Mm. <laughs> say say what you gonna say. <laughs> I, I ain't gonna really say you, you, you the man. <laughs> Go ahead, King, what you got? God, we all know that. He wears dress. He's a drag queen. Oh, come on. That's a drag queen. He, he's a drag queen. He said it's, he said it's your own. He's a drag queen. What's the definition of a drag queen? Anybody know? Man, like, I don't know. <laughs> it's any man that dressed up like a woman to entertain people. There's no difference between him and RuPaul. It's just that he's black and we just got to support everything black. No, we don't. It's a lot of black stuff that's wicked. Oh, boy. You should be watching Big Mama House. That's right. That's right. Some Martin episodes you shouldn't watch. That's right. If Shanae ain't in it. Right. Ain't nothing funny about all oh, boy. See, we don't do Tyler Perry miles. We don't do that. My songs, know, they don't even know who Tyler Perry is. Do you? Yeah, they don't get loud. We don't do that. Because I told y'all, they all, then they separate us. The light, dark skinned man always the abuser. Light skinned man always going to be the savior. Great Fox. The Rock. You know, no disrespect to that. The dark skinned dude was just a mean abuser. You know what I'm saying? No, you get the way you're supposed to act from the world to the world. Who has something? Nobody. Ah, right, let's keep going. These two individuals came before you and lied. Say they lied. Lie. They decided not to give everything. Say everything. Everything, everything that they were supposed to give. They started out selfish. They felt what they offered was good enough. Mm. I repented of this, I They know all my business. Mm. Oh, that's why that's that, that's why you ain't properly go through deliverance. That's why you ain't properly go through deliverance. That's why you ain't properly go through now. Nah, <laughs> what I said about repentance. You said say what again? About the revenge? What I say? That's what I'm asking. I don't know. <laughs> they decided not. Yeah, I was going. I was in my beginning zone. They decided not to give up everything. They decided to hold some stuff back. This is what I said. Told y'all. Yeah. I repented of this. They ain't got to know all the rest of this. I exposed this, and now nah, I'm gonna keep this part of it. And the nice and the fuck, give it all. You hold this stuff back from your. And the who? 
the who I told you to give it all. But you ain't lying to us. You lied to the who I got go dash. It's all his. Now you think. It's all because Yahusha is the garbage man. Mm. Mm. He's the collector. All the trash you have, you can dump it. Mm. He'll come and dispose of it. But some of us are hoarders. Mm. Well, how many people heard our orders last week? Yes, Two hands. So <laughs> hoarders don't be a spiritual order. Yeah, they ain't gonna listen to the lessons. I don't know. Yeah. Oh. Go ahead, go to. So with, with them, with Ananias and Sapphira, like they offer a like they offer an election. And they really did not have to do it. And they really did not have to die. You know what I mean? So if you wonder again, like why did they do it? So at that time, everyone else was on one accord. They were selling all that they had at that time mm -hmm. and they were offering it to the assembly. You know what I'm saying? So they were not on one accord with the assembly. Right. Now they have accord, eventually you'll start engaging in mind the same face until like you're still a part of it. But you don't share the, the mindset, you don't share the um the mission, you don't share the goal, you're not offering the same thing that other people are offering. God, God, hallelujah. Um when you said that you you who is you who is the garbage man, if I'm back to the scripture that I brought up doing um, the youth deliverance. It says, I'm um, noble. Well, Proverbs 16, verse 33. It says, The lot is passed to the lot, but the whole disposing thereof is up your word. Read that slow. Yeah. Right. The lot is passed into the lot, but the whole the post disposing thereof is up your word. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Um, Proverbs 16, verse 33. Okay, there's my king in the back. Um, go all the way to the back, straight ahead. Won't be called names. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I want to say inventory checks. I want to say inventory checks. If you got anything that you owe, let it out. And um, I want to say when they lied to you, or they committed an abomination as well. Because when you blast, isn't it, isn't when you blast them against the world, rock like this, it's also committed an abomination. It's a sin that can't be forgiven. Amen. That's, why they had to die. That's why they had to die. There was no reference for Yah. I think once somebody brought it out too. Will you come before Yah half hearted, not giving your all? So, three, we dealt with the runner, we dealt with the selfish person, and we dealt with the liar. Which one are you going to base out at? Man, that's the only option to know. We got two more, and then we're we going to close out. Hallelujah. Yeah. So we're going to be able to get through all this. We're going to do two more. You will either leave his presence. Listen to me. You're either going to leave his presence in a body bag. I'm sorry. I, I said two things. I, man. I, I'm like, man, you know what? What are you going to do? I'm out of sleep. I think I was around four, five, and four. He got my boy. It's over. So let me correct that. You're going to leave his presence justified, healed, redeemed, or you're going to die where you stay. Just like Ananias and Zephyr. That's only two options. One who gives all. So let's talk about one person who gave his all. Genesis 22, 9 through 12. When they came to the place of which I had told him, Abraham, Abraham, Abraham built the altar there and made the wood in order and bound Isaac, his son, and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then Abraham reached out his hand. And took the knife to slaughter his son. But the angel of you will call to him from the Shemaim to say, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here I am. Here I am. See, he didn't hide like that. Oh, yeah, he catch that. 
You won't call for him. Hey, Adam, Adam. Where you at? He said, I hate myself. Abraham said, here I am. I'm right here. He said, don't lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him. For no, for now I know that you fear your whore. Why? Because you wanted to give up everything. See, you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. Abraham offered his best to Yah with the right heart. So he just offered his best like Cain, but he also had a heart to back it up. See, because you, did Cain offer the right thing? Say, God, he offered the right thing, but he had the wrong heart. He was able to present his son before Yahuwah as a perfect sacrifice offering. See, I ain't catching that. Because when you got to go stand before you and offer your children, would they be without spot or blemish? What you mean? Say no. Are you spending time with your children? You will hold you accountable for that. Fathers and mothers, but it's usually the fathers. It is the mothers too. Don't get so busy and caught up with your job that you don't got time for your children. Don't you get so tired from work. I don't care if I work 16 hours. I'm going to go give them. If, if I'm beat, sometimes I be beat. I go hug them and ask them how they damn words. And I send them my room. They come in. They, they, they don't let me sleep. They come in. ask me. So, hey, dad, you don't do this? Yeah, we do that. We do. Set, set aside a time to spend with your children. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just if they ask you a Bible question, oh, oh, he says, so on now. I remember Yo Yosef was over the house and they asked him question. I said, oh, it's on now. It's a Bible. It's going downstairs. They just asked a simple question. I could have just, I could have just asked But no, I, I want to spend some quality time. We spent about an hour and a half, right? About an hour and a half. About an hour and a half together. Just talk at all y'all. Come around, come around the table. Get, get your Bible. Well, come here with your Bible. I met my son. They always, oh, uh, uh. my oldest son, he be, he be, yeah, I'm ready. So get your Bible. I gave him a whole lesson on dissertation. We broke down Hebrew. We went into Septuagint, huh? We just dig it. Spend some time with you. And they were receptive. You know, your Septuagint, they go on. They, they argue about the Bible. They go, they go say the same thing. They go argue. But they get better. Hallelujah. Somebody have hand up? No. Okay. Because of his obedience in presentation, what he presented, Yah blessed his name and used him to bring forth a nation of Elohim. I ain't gonna get on that. I, go. I see y'all looking at me. Will you be able to present your household and everything y'all has given you back to him in this season? You got to be able to answer yes to that. Can they come back to him as an acceptable offering? Who? Your wife, your children, man, your household, your job, what he's giving you, the money he's giving you. Will it be able to be returned back to you as good stewardship? If not, you got to pay the price. Everything, nothing is left out. Whatever you is giving you, you got to give an account for. Help me. I was going to say also when you said Abraham, <clears throat> Abraham offered his son, Isaac, as a yeah, when he said Abraham, when Abraham was with the offer of his son, the more it's very important that you can see that it was very important that Abraham knew Yah. And you, you know what I'm saying? If, if he wasn't in the right place with Yahushua, if he wasn't in the right spot, he would have murdered his son. He would have just murdered his son. That would have been that would have been another sin on Abraham because he it would have been out of order, you know. He would, you know, that's why it's important 
to know Yahushua, to know the truth, you know? Because if he, you know, if he would have dibble dabble with it, like I said, he would have, he would have killed his son, then he would have been bitter because he killed his son, then, then he probably wouldn't want to listen to y'all no more because right. he killed his son, he would have had a, a hard heart. God, and I yield back. God, God. The perfect sacrifice. What is the perfect sacrifice? Anybody? Yosha. Yosha. They already know what we're going to talk about. Yep. The perfect sacrifice. Philippians 2, 6 to 8. Who, though he was in a form of Yah, did not count equality with Yah as a thing to be grasped. But he emptied himself. Oh, this is deep right here. He emptied himself by taking the form of a servant. Being born in the likeness of men. Same thing you did. <laughs> Hallelujah. And being found in a human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient Hallelujah. to the point of death, even to the state. That's what you should do. He's the perfect sacrifice. The perfect example of being able to give us all. Yahushua was and is the perfect example of giving all to Yah. He gave his whole mind, body, and soul back, say back, back to Yah. You have to give your whole mind, body, soul back, say back to Yah. Why do you got to give it back? Because it was his in the first place. Why you got to give it back? Because you was there already. How you gonna go back to somewhere you ain't never been? Oh. <laughs> Y'all catch that on the video. We are coming to present ourselves before Yahuwah like Yahushua did. Once, here we go. We set up our stake. Crucify ourselves. That's what you should do, right? Crucify ourselves. Because no man takes my body, my, my, my life away. I lay it down on my own accord, right? Once we stake our stake, crucify ourselves, then present ourselves, same thing you should do. He presented himself, sit up here an extra six hours, like Romans 12 says, to Yah, then we can truly walk in our Elohim gene, just like you should do. There's a formula you should get. He said, if any man desires to come after me, he must first deny himself, then take up his stake, and then follow me. You have to follow that concept. We ain't gonna get on the stake. Go listen to our life. I ain't about to ask you to the lesson, because I don't even care no more. Embracing your stake. The situation in your life ain't given to you just to destroy you. It's given to you because there's something in you that needs to die. And that situation is your stake that you got to crucify yourself to. Yes. I said, you said he was up there for six hours. God, I believe six or eight, one of them. Let me just brought it out because it's like six is the number of, which is the number of the God flesh. God. God. Um, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because y'all know you wish you could have came off that stake at any time. Yeah. See, that's why I couldn't be me, because I'd have came down. Like, I don't know if I stand up here. I don't know if I did my due diligence. <laughs> <laughs> Most of the year. Everybody would have did that. That's why I wasn't worthy. That's why you wish you had to do it. Because see, if it was me, can I, can I be honest? Remember when Yahushua was like, if I want to, I can summon a legion of angels? <laughs> Yo, here we go. I'm, I'm killing everybody. That's why I wasn't worthy. But Yahushua had to come and do that. So how will you present yourself before y'all? Will you present yourself like Cain? Will you present yourself like Ananias and Safari? Or even as Adam did. Will you be a liar, a runner, or what? Selfish. Selfish. Or will you present yourself as Abraham, Dawid, and Yahushua did? I used only Abraham and Yahushua. I could have wanted to Dawid. I could have wanted to many other people who offered themselves before you. 
I forgot the man's name, where he promised y'all, whatever comes out, I'll give, I'll give up to you. Right, right. And his daughter came out. Right, right. But see, not even a deep part. Because when he told his daughter, his daughter's like, man, do, do what you said you're going to do to you. Man, see, obedient even unto death. Because if my mom would have told me that, all you would have seen is smoke. I'm out. <laughs> Go on. Catch me. I'm sorry. I'm, that's, why, that's why you brought me here this time, right? right? But she was obedient even unto death. But that also, I was about to ask him about another lesson. I don't know if y'all seen our Yahushua series. Yeah, if you did, you missing up. You missing yeah, the whole. You missing everything. Because we brought up human sacrifice. Because you know a lot of these rules are like, hey, Yahushua can't die for you because Torah teaches against human sacrifice. When there's human sacrifice all throughout the Torah. That's why I wasn't crazy for Abraham to take his son up to kill him. That's why nobody called the police on him. Because people died for the sins of the nation. People were Mashiachs. But some people died because they were vessels unto destruction. Hey, kid, say, hey, kid. You said I'm about to kill the whole nation. He even tells Joshua where the sin was at. He said, find it. Joshua went to go find him. I know they was out of gathered over to me. We got to find the sin. He about to kill all of us. Everybody report mercy meeting today. We find out Aiken had it. What did they do to Aiken? They stoned him and what? And burned him. And his household. And his mama and his daddy and his wife and children. And everything he had. The reason why he did that because they knew it. according to the tour, if you know you don't hold him accountable, you got to die with him. But the Bible said when he died and he offered up blood, human sacrifice, the sin was removed from the nation of Israel. What? It's all messed up. Yeah, they, they, they ain't going to watch it though. Ain't, they ain't watch it. I, I hope they don't watch it either. They let them miss it. Cause that was a problem. I might do that series all over. And you out here struggling to prove Yahushua. And your boy got a whole series explaining Yahushua from Genesis all the way throughout the talk. You got nerve come ask me, this Hebrew trying to battle me with Yahushua. But you ask me no Yahushua questions. And got a whole series. God. Will you die in his presence or choose to be changed? Say loud on that. Will you run, lie, or have selfish pride? Have you counted your cost and considered your ways? Hallelujah.